But it is briefly worth mentioning how you can quantify the ultrasound. Because, you know, we've got that dB microvolt uh, value, the dB value, um, and that will give us certain information, but we can go beyond that. We can look at the time waveform and look at the dynamic nature of the data as well as we will see in just a moment. You know, we can listen to it and try to describe, you know, it does it click, 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 or does it click, pop, click, or does it snap, crackle, and pop, and, you know, what does it do? Um, uh, and we can try to learn and recognize those sorts of sounds and what they might mean. And of course, we can numerically quantify it with RMS peak crest factor and ketosis and other systems may have other ways for you to do it. But the RMS, it's just, I guess, helpful to understand that the RMS is sort of like the broad energy. It's, it's highly affected by, if you like, the, the signal. So this is an ultrasound waveform. We can see it. It's you know, a bit, bit spiky. There's little spikes or yeah, it's a good way to describe it. But there's this bulk sound in here. And so the RMS is going to be dominated by that. And so that'll tell us something for sure. That will tell us something, you know, between lubricated and not lubricated and so on. But we, we're we interested in those spikes, you know. And what we can have is we can have an increasing number of spikes and the RMS won't budge very much. So we need to do something about that. So what we can do is we can look at the RMS and we can look at the peaks that are there. <clears throat> we can take the peak value, see, okay, that's the highest peak, and we can compare that to the RMS value, and that gives us something called crest factor. And so, <clears throat> you know, the higher the crest factor goes, it's a way of saying there's more, well, not so much more peaks in it, but the spikes are higher in amplitude relative to the RMS. And you can see a little sort of guide there. Um, in a moment, I'll mention one called kurtosis, which does, you know, potentially a better job because it's affected by the number of spikes there, not just the peak level of the worst spike sort of thing. And uh, in fact, I don't think I'll go into that, but we got a little simulator, simulator that explains it all and whatnot, but I can see time is running out very quickly. But if you look at these little samples of data, and I won't play them, you can see that it's just about all just the sort of normal noise, if you want to call it that, and there's no peak. So you can see what the RMS level is and what the crest factor is. And you can see it's mostly just that sort of noise, sort of, sort of, sort of sound, if you like. But as there's more spikes, you can see, you know, the RMS, if you just keep an eye on that, the peak in the RMS, you can see how the crest factor, which is a ratio, is changing. And you can see there's more spikes there. And then the crest factor is higher again as there are more spikes, and you can see them there. So it, it is a good measure to use. And kurtosis also provides a very good indication of, you know, sort of how many peaks there are, how peaky it is, if you like.